Hi everyone, welcome back to the Golden Castle FX, the home of proper forex education, all free of charge. We do not charge anyone, so feel free. My name is Nixon, and it is my pleasure to present to you uh, the next bunch of lessons, the next episodes of lessons. And the last time we spoke about uh, uh, the different players in the market, we saw that uh, central banks are the players in the market, we saw the government is part of the player, we saw the brokers, the retailers, the hedge funds, the, the, the commercial companies and all that. Now, we have, I, want to, I want to show you uh, something. Uh, let me go to the charts. Yeah, so like we were saying guys, we were saying that uh, so in the last chapter, of course, remember we saw the government here, we saw the, the central bank, we saw the, the, the commercial banks, we saw the other uh, institutions, you know, brokers and many other, even retailers. Now, when you look at the banks, when you call the banks, we we'll, we'll look at the banks, we'll see we have different banks inside the FX to provide liquidity. Yeah, they provide the liquidity during their transactions, and that's what you take advantage of. So, we have a bank here like UBS, we have Barclays here, we have Barclays, we have uh, uh, Goldman, Sachs. There is also J. P. Morgan. Guys, these are the big. These are the big banks, guys. These are the big banks that are in this market. These are the banks that move the market. When you see the market moving, there's a bank. There's always a bank that is moving that market whenever it's moving. We also have credit. Credit Swiss Swiss we have H S B C Bank there is also Morgan Stanley I'm sure this one is very popular uh, among everyone Morgan Stanley yeah so these are the major banks. We also have Deutsche Bank actually from Germany. Deutsche Bank from Germany. So of course these are international banks here we are looking at. Like uh, although some of them are locally available in our country in Kenya, like uh, Barclays, which is known as uh, uh, Absa Bank, the Absa Group. Now it's no longer Barclays. Now it's Absa Group. Um, I, I think this one only, the one that used to operate in Kenya. Then, of course, we have normal banks, you not know, like Cop Bank, Cop Bank. But now these are small banks in the global arena. You know, these are small banks, KCB. You know, they are not as big as this was. You know, these are global banks. You know, these other ones here. And the, the liquidity they move in the FS market is massive. It is massive. You know, when you hear about that daily turnover liquidity of $7.5 billion, we're talking about these major banks here that are moving that liquidity. So it's, it's, it's good to just understand, you know, it's just uh, for your understanding that uh, when, uh, markets, uh, when, he, when the market is moving, uh, there's a bank that is involved. Maybe it wants to get uh, dollars and give back euros to this bank. So that when they're working together as two banks, uh, usually it's called an interbank. Interbank. The whole of this is called interbank, but you know, like uh, sometimes, uh, most of the time, they will do business among themselves. You know, like uh, Credit Suisse would be wanting a uh, uh, Switzerland uh Switzerland francs, you know, from maybe UBS, and maybe UBS would be wanting the dollar. So they are, they, in this market, they float that through this market, and it all happens inside there. And that's why we say the forex market is the largest market in the world. 
compared even to all the stock exchanges put together. So that is it for banks. And uh, I, another, what I want us to look at now is uh, let us look at forex dealers. Forex dealers. Because I want to look at I want us to look in detail at forex dealers. Remember, guys, we had already looked at uh, the market participants. Remember, we too looked at the market participants, and in it we saw different uh, participants. You know, like the banks, the central banks, the 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 government, the brokers, the the retailers, speculators. These are the people now we want to look at in detail here. So, number one, we have the FX dealers. The forex dealers so forex dealers amongst the biggest participants in the forex market like we've just seen we've just seen here in this uh, chart house drawing for you uh, these are the banks and they are also known as the broker dealers the forex dealers so most forex dealers in the world are banks and the big banks especially it is for this reason that the market in which dealers interact with one another is also known as the interbank market yeah interbank interbank market why because the forex dealers the major dealers are the banks and most mostly the big banks that's why the market the FX market is known as the interbank market when the dealers are involved because they're not involved every time you know only when there is need for it. Different banks will be involved in the, in the forex market at different times. You know, like if a bank is in Tokyo, obviously it should not be involved at a time when another bank is in, in the US is involved. You know, they, 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 this, this business happens like when they wake up in the morning, uh, customers are flocking in the bank and they want to do business. Maybe one of them wants to make an importation, another one wants to buy something abroad. It depends on where it is. This, this all starts there in the morning in every country, and the banks start checking the interbank market. You know, like who has the dollar, who has the dollar, who can give me the dollar at the lowest rate so that I can make, you know, something out of it uh, during the exchange rate and all that. So most forex dealers in the world are banks, and it is for this reason, like we are saying that. It's called the interbank market. However, there are some notable non-bank financial institutions also that deal in the foreign exchange. So these dealers participate in the forex market by providing bid and ask quotes for currency pairs at all times. All, all brokers do not participate in all currency pairs. Rather, they may specialize in a specific currency pair. Yeah, a bank might decide to just specialize in a particular pair, maybe the pound. And another another dealer in the bank might decide to specialize in the in the Australian dollar. Yeah, so uh, a lot of dealers also use their own capital to conduct proprietary trading operations. When both these operations are combined, forex dealers have a significant participation in the forex market. Yeah, so that's it for banks. So you, you 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 might find a bank is interested in the euro only at that particular time, and not the others. That's why sometimes we say, by the way, you'd say just the, I, the euro starts moving big because there is an interest. There is a there is a bank that is you know having a major interest in it. You know, in uh, making an exchange and all that. Then we 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 also have brokers. We looked at brokers, you remember, in the participants, yeah, and who are brokers? These brokers are basically uh, institutions that do transactions for other clients. So they help the clients obtain the best quotation in any business that you do to buy or to sell. You need a quotation. You need a quotation, but now this quotation is different. This is not that quotation where you want a supply of uh, eggs, you know, like uh, 100 crates of eggs, and then you, 
you, you send a quotation with the prices and all that, then you wait, the, the transaction happens, eventually the eggs are supplied and you write a check to the company that, that's supplying the eggs and all that. This is a bit different because this one happens on the spot, you know, like right away you 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 click on a purchase, you say you want to purchase the dollars against the euro. Straight away a quote presents itself on your platform on your trading platform if it's a bank straight away a quote presents itself to them from the other bank right away real time this market is real time so once that happens now the other party makes the decision whether he has accepted that exchange rate that is in the quote because the quote contains the exchange rate for what exchange rate for the requested transaction transaction if you are buying gbp usd or euro usd the quotation will contain that exchange rate and what's the reason why it's contained that exchange rate for the parties to make a decision to come to an agreement it's like an auction kind of you know like you come to an agreement that this is what price i'm comfortable with so i can complete the transaction so for instance brokers may also help their clients obtain the lowest buying price so you see still based on the quotation the purpose of the broker is to make sure the client he is taking care of gets the lowest quotation because there are many quotations that are going to be floated you know by different banks you know by the interbank there are many banks yeah a bank has had somebody is selling the dollar so all of them may be flocked their quotations you know like until the broker picks the the lowest that the client or the best that the client is representing uh, uh, requested him to so another major reason for using brokers is creating anonymity while trading yeah so many big investors and even forex dealers do do do, do not want uh uh that uh do they, they may not want some of their information known out there you know they want to do the business stiltly you know like uh, uh privately you know without uh being uh, noticed by anyone you know like uh, it could be a transaction that is private you know so you don't have everyone to know that yeah so many big investors and dealers uh use the services of brokers who act as henchmen or middlemen for the trading operations of these big players so we're going to look at hedges we also have hedges i'm sure you know what hedging means hedging is protecting risk hedging means protecting risk now sorry hedges uh there are actually there are many businesses which end up creating an asset or a liability priced in foreign currency in the regular course of their business you know as we do business eh? so for example importers and exporters engage in foreign trade uh, and i may have open positions in several foreign currencies so they may therefore be impacted if there's a fluctuation you know uh, the forex market has fluctuations through because it's made up of different economies from different countries and these guys are waking up maybe some event happens there and these guys are going to sleep so they don't know what's happening on the other country so these events cause fluctuations so uh, we're saying those are uh, corporates or uh, dealers uh, may therefore be impacted if there's a fluctuation in the value of the foreign currency which they are involved in not every currency the currency that they're involved in, in to do business maybe they're importing something from um a russia or us or uh, you know so you find uh, they, they 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 could they get impacted depending on what is happening in that country so as a result uh to protect themselves against such uh, situations or losses we have hedgers you know they can open an account with a hedger and then the hedgers take opposite positions in that market Therefore, if there is an unfavorable movement in the, in the company's original position, it is offset by an opposite movement 
in their hedged positions. So their profits and losses are therefore nullified and they get stability in the operations of their business. Their positions, I mean, uh, we're talking of the positions that they are in. So the positions they are in are the ones that are going to be to be neutralized by a situation that could happen because in the world of economics, you know, like uh, and political scene, anything could happen overnight. And you know what would happen when you're doing business. So you cover yourself up. So that's the purpose of the edges. Then uh, we do have other participants we have talked about. Um, let's just clear this space. And I hope people are following the lessons now kindly. If you are not uh, understanding, feel free to send us your comments in every video. Just put a co your comment in every video. And we should be able to to address the issue. So we have speculators. So guys, as I told you, don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry to get this knowledge. Why? This knowledge is all inside here. It's all inside here. We are giving it for you for free. We're giving it to you for free. The knowledge is here. And all you have to do is take your time. When you have the time, visit the the, the channel golden castle fx go through the video review it if you don't understand put comments if you have questions we'll answer the questions for you so move at your own pace no hurry there's no hurry in getting this knowledge because you'll get it eventually yeah you get it and the price is not going high you know like we're not like uh, raising the price or anything it's just there for you so speculators is another participant we talked about and we, we speculators are a class of traders that have no genuine requirement for the foreign currency. They don't have any genuine requirement for that foreign currency. These are speculators we are going deep into. And they only buy and sell these currencies with the hope of making a profit from it. That's the reason why they buy and sell, with the hope of making a profit from it. So the number of speculators normally, just like uh, in the stock exchange, whereby when you hear, let's say, Safaricom is buying a new, uh, uh, is, is investing in a new product, uh, they want to release a new product in the market. Obviously, we expect the shares, the stocks of Safaricom to rise in value within a, a, a given time as they go to into releasing that information into the into the media. So what happens is that uh, even in stock, even in a forex market, speculators will tend to increase when there is rising sentiment in the forex market why because that's when everybody starts to rush to invest in such a in such a situation in such such an event when they hear about the event so the number of circulators will increase also in forex in the forex market a lot and a lot when the market sentiment is high and everyone seems to be making money in the forex market you know like uh Ah, somebody comes and tells you ah, the, the, the dollar is really gaining value now, you know, the, 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 this, this is happening and the economy and all that. I made this much last, last week. You go into the market and try to repeat what the person told you that he did. And the cycle continues, you know, like through word of mouth, you find the sentiments are getting higher and higher and higher and people are coming in more and more and more into into the market so that's that's basically what happens how speculators do they include they tend to increase when the sentiments of the market are rising so speculators usually do not maintain open positions in any currency for a very long time why because of course we said they are not they're they not interested in the in keeping the currency you know or, or or they don't have any genuine requirement for the currency it's just for profit so most of the time, they don't keep uh, the positions they open uh, for long. So a position here, we are talking about uh, the trade you take. The trade you take in this business is called a position. You know, so like when you start trading, you'll be asking your friend, which, which position are you in, in the dollar? You know, like which position, are, he'll tell you, I'm in this position, I'm in a buy or I'm in a sell. That's what you call a position. You know, like it's just a terminology. And we're going to be seeing more terminologies as we move, up, move on into the lesson. So we're saying... Speculators usually do not keep, do not maintain open positions in any currency for a very long time. 
and their positions are transient and are only meant to make a short-term profit because they're just speculating they have not they don't have the interest in the in the currency they don't have interest in that economy and what is happening there yes they are listening but they, they don't have the interest so that's come the reason why their positions are not there for long and they they, they, they make they're just there to make a short-term profit and run you know and i mean like get out of the market now we have other players called arbitrage traders arbitrage arbitragers you know like arbitragers they these are traders who basically just um capitalize on differences in markets so arbitragers are traders that make that take advantage of the price discrepancy you know sometimes price can have a discrepancy like for instance we have something called a gap you know like monday price was here on friday then come monday price opens here and then it starts rising again so this idea we have a gap that's a discrepancy now these discrepancies are caused by different things like sudden information coming into the market like sudden news just coming to the market like uh like uh, maybe something to do with maybe heavy rains downpour in a country that maybe was about to harvest uh, cotton or wheat or you know something that is impacted yeah, by that heavy rain so that would impact that 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 stock likewise it would impact that currency you know whatever currency it is and all that so these things would cause this kind of discrepancies in the market so arbitrageurs are people who take advantage of price discrepancy in different markets to make a profit and arbitrageurs serve an important function in the foreign exchange market it is their operations that ensure that a market as a large as large as decentralized and as diffused as the forex market functions efficiently and provides uniform price quotations and provides unifies, uni, uniform price quotations okay yeah uh, so they ensure uniform price quotations all over the world the arbitrageurs yeah these people here yeah don't forget that eh? this 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 plays a big role when it comes to trading somewhere along the way in your experience in trading you'll come to realize that so whenever arbitrageurs find a price discrepancy what do they do in the market they start buying in one place and selling in another till when till the discrepancy disappears okay fine let's look at another um uh, market player uh major one this one is a major market player guys you'll see him this one this one impacts price this one impacts price and this one is called the central central bank central banks so central banks as you remember is one of the market players in the forex market just like the commercial banks you know so central banks we have different central banks first of all we have different central banks in every country every country has got a central bank in kenya we have cbk so cbk you no know, that's a central bank in kenya in uh, europe we have european central bank european central bank in uh, in uh, uk we have bank of england boe in japan we have bank of japan of course i'm just touching on the major economies eh? why because this uh, major central banks in these major economies impact actually impact the forex market a lot and when you start trading when you get into that level which we will take you 
because the promise will take you there step by step no hurry guys eh? you are going to be hearing a lot about this guys you know there's also bank of canada yeah yeah there is also a bank uh, uh, reserve bank of new zealand this is a central bank in new zealand new zealand is a major economy in uh, in the asia in the asia market bank of japan is a major economy in the asia market we also have reserve bank of australia rba yeah rba reserve bank of australia this is a central bank of australia reserve bank of new zealand of course there is one more that we've not mentioned which is the fed f e d r s v fed reserve this is called the federal reserve of america you know like this is the central bank of the us and this one this one really moves the market a lot so you'd find that when it comes to currencies eh, each central bank here is in charge of doing what stabilizing their currency because when you stabilize the currency what are you doing you're stabilizing the economy isn't it so that your currency doesn't lose value so what happens central banks have a big role to play in introducing monetary policies that will do what will centralize we will stabilize their currency so every central bank of course has got some uh, uh, has got a, a, a group of policy makers there are policy makers in every central bank and these are the people who are in charge of uh, making these policies you know like it's a give and take you know like this time around inflation is going high so what do we do maybe we we cap certain things you know so these are the guys who are behind it and the person in charge of this central bank is called a governor it's called a governor not your normal governor for the counties eh? not the not the Kitui county governor or the Machakos governor or the Nairobi governor or the Kisumu governor. No, no, no. These are governors in charge of money in the country. They're in charge of controlling how that money flows. How is it? How many dollars do we have in Kenya today? How many pounds do we have in Kenya today? These people know. These guys, they hold all that information because they run the the central bank they run the economy basically of the country actually these are the the, the the biggest ceos in a country is the central bank governor yeah if you want to know what is happening you ask him he'll knows and usually these governors will release economic news you know these guys will release economic news every now and then now this economic news is released in in uh, in uh, at a particular time every day and this time is global it could be 8 a.m in kenya but it it's uh midnight in another country if you're a trader in that other country it's up to you to know that the information is being released at that particular time and this information uh guys um let me just create some space here let me create some space here and show you guys how these things are done i show you where this information comes from how it looks and uh we'll be off to another topic you know so uh this information is released in something called an economic calendar guys economic calendar now we have different economic calendars out there and for information they are free so this economic calendars is where 
any news that is being released by a central bank of a certain country at a particular time on a in a particular date it's listed here of course with the flag of course it has the flag of the country and the currency so when you see the flag and the currency already you can tell this is news from uk if it's the gbp gbp is from the uk we're going to be looking at those currencies uh in a, in, a, in our very soon lessons eh? so you don't have to worry about those names you'll know all of them you must all of them so uh, the flag is shown here in the economic calendar you know and then somewhere here they show the currency and also outside here they show the time the time and the date that this information will be released because you know in trading you can also decide to become a news trader you know like the market you realize the market only moves your style during news so you don't want to be in the market throughout so you only you this will be a very good asset for you the economic calendar okay let's say you just want to pick profit very fast in the market and come out of the market and call it a day you know you need the economic calendar and this economic calendar will be releasing news for all the currencies all the instruments in every country it's you to choose you can choose and decide you'll only be listening for news at for the us or for the uk or for europe only you know it's you to decide that eh? so in this same calendar now after the currency you're going to have the news here now the news the news will have a name and we're going to look at them so the name could be inflation inflation usually written as uh inflation something 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 percentage you know it could be inflation different countries call it different names and there are different types of news we are going to see so in this economic calendar we shall open the economic calendar later and uh, just look at these things and you'll get to understand them later so this news what what now how you trade this news now is that it is grouped in expected news and then there is the previous news because you have to compare it from the previous news and then there is the 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 real you know the real that has been released so this real is called the actual the actual so if inflation is let's say maybe one percent Inexpected. It means the majority of the um, economists out there have done research in the market and they have realized that this is likely to be the inflation rate that the central bank governor is likely to announce this time around. Then, in the same economic calendar, maybe it was 2% in the last announcement that the central bank made. Because the, the economic uh, events uh, news are always announced by the central bank governor, even though they are prepared by the by the policy makers, you know, in that governor, but they are announced by the by the governor, just like a CEO in any company, you know, he he, he gets all the information from uh, the other people down there, and then he's the one, he's the face of the company, he's the one who makes the the announcements of new launches of products and all that. So like in the in the in the in the stock exchange you'll be looking at what is the ceo really announcing what is that but now here you're looking at the the central bank governor what is he announcing and by the way for your information when this news is released if the expected by the majority in the market out there was one percent and the previous was two percent then it means they're expecting inflation to to drop and the inflation drops is good eh? It's good it's not bad because goods become a little bit maybe affordable and rather maybe they are too tight eh? so if the if the actual that is released now by the governor becomes three percent this is not good because the majority were expecting this so this has been released it's not good because it's more than what the majority were expecting and it's even more than the previous so you take action based on this because what will happen when this happens the currency this currency is going to react very very strongly 
in the direction that the news gives. And these are some of the instruments that the central bank basically uses to control the economy. Maybe they want to wipe uh, excess liquidity in the market, so they implement certain policies like this, so that maybe their credit, be credit becomes a bit expensive to get. And when credit is a bit expensive, of course, it means uh, not very many people will have access to money, and therefore they'll have mopped out excess uh, cash in the market. Why they do that? So that they can stabilize the prices of goods. Yeah. So uh, this economic calendar we said is accessible in uh, there's one called there are several. So there's one called you can go look at it Forex Factory. There's one called Forex Factory. There's another one called My Air My FX book. Actually, this one this is the one I use a lot. My FX book. There's Forex Factory, there's my FX book. And you can also Google. You can Google. There are very many, many, many economic calendars and they are very important. So here they are going to list so many currencies and it's you to decide which currency and events you want to follow. Now, another place you can get uh, news uh, is a place called Bloomberg. Bloomberg. This is for news traders out there who, who feel that uh, Bloomberg TV, who feel that news can be a, a good approach for them. Because you see now you're learning this, this is the time you should start picking things here and there on how your what kind of a trader you're going to be. So these are just hints I'm giving you that could help you. And if you feel they are useful, it's good to take the notes. So uh, what you're saying is that um, what you're saying is that uh, central banks will release this information, and this information is publicly available at the right time. They don't you don't hear rumors that they released. No, you have the economic calendar, so you know what time they are going to release that news, and it will be exactly at that second, at that time, timely. It's one of the things that is that makes forex trading very interesting, by the way. So we said every country has got the central bank. Every country has got the central bank. And uh, we have just looked at the, the how the central bank releases information into the market. We this is basically the, we, are, we, have look, we have looked at the role. This is the role that the central bank plays. It's just it's just a major role, by the way. You, you, if you follow it keenly, you should be able to, to, to benefit. It's a very major role. So central banks of all countries participate in the forex market in that manner. And they do it to a big extent, by the way. Because like, uh, if, you go to, if you go to YouTube, check the year 2015. I remember it was January. And check something called the Swiss the Swiss crash there's something that happened on this day and this was all because of policies this kind of policies and it's so important so I'm just writing it here for you to note so that you can know how important central banks are in stabilizing the currency when they decide it's time to stabilize it to make it more expensive or more cheaper you know just like a shopkeeper a shopkeeper can be selling bread at 90 shillings, but another one decides to sell 91 shillings. When you go to the shop, the guy tells you, um, you know, uh, my bread is uh, fresh, you know, like uh, it doesn't get stale, you know, for some reason. It's high quality. I always only get the high quality. So you end up buying that bread. So it's you as a consumer to decide. So most of the times, the participation of the central bank is very official. Most of the time, it's very official. And when you hear a central bank is giving a speech, guys, you should open the television and listen. Because you say this speech contains so many elements of news. You know, he could talk about inflation. And that is a major factor in the market. He could talk about uh, some activity they want to, to engage in. 
to stabilize the shilling, for instance. They might be wanting to increase the interest rates, for instance. So it's important to listen to their speeches. Their speeches also move the market big time, big time, not just the news. Okay? Now, although, although many central banks do participate in the market, uh, some some are not very aggressive in it, you know, like the, the, the market just dictates and all that. So, uh, this is because every central bank has a target. Every central bank has its own target, maybe depending on how the economy is pushing its currency, you know. And the target has a the, the target has a range within which they would like to see their currency fluctuate. It should remain stable, but in a certain fluctuation manner. If the currency falls out of a given range, central banks conduct open market operations to bring it back in the range. Also, whenever the currency of a given nation is under speculative attack, central banks participate extensively in the market to defend the currency. Otherwise, the currency would collapse. You know yeah so uh guys uh, that's it uh for central banks we also have the retail market participants which is you and me you know like retail market participants also include tourists uh, car consumers you know who go to the bank to exchange dollars or uh, traders like you and me and even patients in the hospitals who are traveling to get maybe some treatment somewhere they have to exchange big amounts and uh, then there are also a variety of small businesses that indulge in foreign exchange uh, guys and uh, basically um, that is where we reach today we reach the lesson for today so viewers once more we come to the end of this lesson and thank you for taking your time and uh, to watch our videos at golden castle fx uh, we want to ensure that you get the real knowledge, the proper forex knowledge uh, to ensure your good journey to, profit, to profitability. Keep following us and as usual, if you have any, if you have not subscribed, kindly just on the bottom right side of the video, there is a red button. Please just click on it and click subscribe so that you can help us produce more videos like these ones. And thank you till the next lesson. Bye bye.